Welcome to Storytime with my dad, John Feinstein. As I've said often, one of the books I enjoyed doing the most was The Last Amateurs, which was about basketball in the Patriot League. And it kind of, it grew out of two things. The first one was a civil war, which was about the Army-Navy rivalry. And of course, Army and Navy were in the Patriot League for basketball, still are. Uh, and, and that was in the back of my mind. But it was more a day at a basketball summer camp. It was in New Jersey. And I was sitting with some coaches, watching various players. And I, I pointed at one guy and I said, well, what's his story? Oh, he's a Prop 48. He's not going to be eligible to play as a freshman. What's his story? And he's got an agent. Nobody wants to mess with him. Well, what's his story? Oh, God, he's already being paid by X. I can't even, I honestly can't remember the school that was mentioned. And I remember feeling like I needed a shower just sitting there. So I went to take a walk outside the building to get some fresh air and because I needed a shower. And as I walked out of the building, I ran into Don DeVoe, who was coaching at Navy at the time, and Emmett Davis, who had been an assistant at Navy and had taken the job at Colgate. And I was surprised to see them there because most of the players who were at this camp were being recruited by the ACC, the Big Ten, the Big East, the big time conferences. And I asked them, I said, what are you guys doing here? And DeVoe said, look, there are some guys in there who think they're gonna play in the ACC who aren't. And some of them may be good enough students that we can recruit them at Navy or at Colgate. And Emmett said to me that coaching at Colgate was a whole different experience than coaching in the big time. And I said, what do you mean by that? Because there are obvious differences. He said, I had a kid on my team last year who was a senior. He was probably our seventh guy. He played, didn't start, but he played. And in the middle of the season, he came to me and said he felt that he needed to drop off the team because he had a chance to become a Rhodes Scholar. And he needed to work on his grades a little bit and also on his essay for the Rhodes Scholarship. And I completely understood. I mean, it's not like the kid was going to play in the NBA. And he wrote his essay for the Rhodes Scholarship on how hard it was to give up basketball because he loved it so much. But he wanted the Rhodes Scholarship enough that he was willing to do it. He got the Rhodes Scholarship, interestingly. And I thought to myself, wouldn't it be fun to write about kids like that for a year? So I started to put the wheels in motion. I convinced my agent, Esther Newberg, who was of course totally against the idea because it had nothing to do with the University of Connecticut or any superstars to get me a contract, which he did for less money than I usually got, but that was fine. I wanted to do the book. And then I went and talked to each of the Patriot League coaches. And the reactions range from, of course, love to have you, to Fran O'Hanlon at Lafayette saying, are you kidding? Don't you have anything better to do? And of course, O'Hanlon and Lafayette turned out to be not only the league champions, but a great story as I was researching the book. My last call was a courtesy call. It was to Carolyn Schlieff Themovich, who had just become the executive director of the Patriot League. She had worked in compliance, I believe, at Penn prior to that. She coached also. So I called her and I introduced myself and I told her I was planning to do a book that season uh, on the Patriot League. And then I'd been in touch with all the coaches and. I knew I would see her around as the season went on. She said to me, the most important thing is you don't do anything to jeopardize the eligibility of our student athletes. And I said, hmm, Carolyn, are there any rules against being interviewed? And she said, well, no. I said, well, then I think your student athletes will be okay. They were okay. My dad also writes books and some of them are good. 